Hi, I'm Aisha Fermansky with Beeducation.com, and today I'm going to show you how to make your own custom shapes using a jeweler saw and sheet metal. Now, if you haven't done any sawing before, you're going to want to pop on over and check out Kate Richberg's free class called Sawing on Metal. Sawing is a great technique that I really love using, and I use it often in my own designs at home and a lot here when I'm designing for Beeducation. It's really worth mastering because once you have it down, it's going to bust open the possibilities in your own designs. A question we get often here at Beeducation.com and at trade shows is, what size saw blade do I need for my project? Now the answer is it's all dependent on the thickness of the metal you're using with your project. A really neat, cool little way to remember is the two teeth rule, which is you need two teeth of the blade to the thickness of metal. Now, if those little blades are a little small, it's a little hard to see, pop on over to the class details page where you'll find a guide. When sawing, you want your shoulder to be at the same height as your bench pin. Now this will allow for more comfortable sawing, less sore shoulder, and less broken blades. And remember, safety comes first, so be careful with your fingers, keep them out of the way of your saw blade while you're sawing, and pull out those safety glasses, and let's get started. Here are the tools and materials we're going to use in today's class permanent pen, water-based glue stick, pro polish pad, an emery board or sandpaper, variety of metal files, saw blades, jeweler saw, cut loop, a bench pin with clamp, and in today's class I used a screw down hole punch and a hole punch plier but you can also use a drill. 20 or 22 gauge sheet metal. Today in class I use 20 gauge. And a blank. When I saw or cut out my own shapes out of sheet metal, there are four different techniques I use. The first is to create my own paper template. This little anchor here, I drew the anchor and then filled it in with permanent marker to create a real defined line. So when I'm sawing, it's a real nice guide. And then I adhere it with water-based glue stick straight down onto the sheet metal. The second technique I use are these plastic templates. I place the template onto the sheet metal, use my trusty permanent pen, and trace the shape. The third is to use a pre-existing shape lay it onto the sheet, trace it once again with my permanent marker, and the fourth and most wild is just to freehand it and just draw whatever image it is or whatever shape it is that you'd like and run with it. In the class today, we're going to use the anchor on the paper template. And I'm going to show you how to glue that down. So you're going to take your trusty glue stick and you're going to apply it directly onto the sheet of metal. Now you want to make sure that you have a thorough yet thin coating. You don't want to really glob it on and then have the glue seep through your paper. A nice little thin coating. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. Just like that. If you see I've trimmed my anchor down just a little bit. You want to leave about a quarter of an inch of white paper around your design. And that's because it's easier to saw through the paper than fighting with the edge of the paper if you were to trim it just exactly along the edge of the design. So now I'm going to place it down here on my sheet. And just with my finger, I'm just going to lightly burnish that down to the sheet of metal here. Just like that. And now we're ready to saw. I'm going to begin by placing my blade right here on the edge of my sheet metal and lightly drawing down to start a notch. Now once you have a nice little notch started, you're going to straighten your saw blade up. Thank you. 
Now the thing to remember when sawing is let the blade do the work. Now as you're sawing, there's two things you don't want to do. You don't want to push your blade forward. What will happen is you'll break your blade. And the second thing you don't want to do is get a real tight death grip on the handle of your saw frame. Just remember to lightly cradle it in your hand. Now I'm coming up to my design and I'm constantly wiping away little flecks of metal. And I'm going to stay to the right or on the outside of my design. If you decide to stay right on the line, either way is fine, just stay consistent. Now we're coming up to a turn. So anytime you need to turn the blade, what you're going to do is you're going to saw into the corner and then you're going to continue to saw up and down in one position and with your hand rotate the metal like this. I've reached another corner, so let's go over that one more time. I'm going to slowly saw in place while slowly rotating the metal. And now I'm good to go. I've made the turn. Now with these softer edges here, you don't so much need to stay in position like I just showed you. You can kind of lightly turn a corner, kind of like using a sewing machine. So you slowly turn to the left, making sure I'm sewing the whole time. And now to the right. As I was sawing, my blade got a little gunked up with a combination of the glue and the copper, which is very soft. And I ended up pulling the blade out and starting over again. And I wanted to show you this. Instead of sawing all the way back through the path that I had just made, what I did was I just cut in from the closest edge of metal. And I'm just going to meet up with my original path.
To remove the paper template, you're going to use a warm bowl of water or warm water out of your tap. And this is going to loosen up the paper and the glue. And it'll just come right off. A little paper towel, dry this off, and then I'm going to show you how to file and sand. The next technique I'm going to show you is tracing a pre-existing shape. And I'm going to use this raised edge pendant here, but first I'm going to stick a little piece of tape on the back of that blank. And lay it down, it just helps me. Keep it in place. Take that permanent marker and trace the heart. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop a hole in the center of my piece to thread my blade through. This is called piercing. Now threading my piece onto my saw blade face up. Just like that. I've tightened the tension on my blade and added cut lube to my blade as well. Now I'm going to start sawing. Now I'm going to go to the right or clockwise and that's just so I can keep an eye on that line. hear me blowing it's because I'm constantly trying to remove some of the flashing from the top of the piece so I can see my line and here I am in the home stretch heart cut out of our blank. I'm going to release this from the blade and then I'm going to show you how to file and finish this piece. To finish these pieces I'm going to use a series of files in sandpaper. I'm going to start with the two cut file here and this is going to remove quite a bit of metal pretty quickly. So if you see here I have some ends here that aren't so round and some areas that just need a little bit of love. So let's go ahead and, and clean up those edges. Now remember when filing, these files remove metal on the push when you, when you push away from you. If you file back and forth, back and forth as if you were doing your fingernails, um, you don't actually remove any metal when you're drawing back towards you. The only thing you do is dull your file. It 
As you see, I'm flipping back and forth between the rounded side and flat side of my file. Whenever I come up to a curve, I want to switch to that round side. Now, if you see in here, I can't really get in here with this really large file, so I'm going to switch to a needle file. Now I'm going to continue in this fashion all the way around my piece, taking off all of these sharp edges. Most of the time I can clean up all of my edges with a combination of the number two file and the needle files, and that's just fine. But sometimes if I want to refine the edges just a little bit more and soften them up a little bit, I'll use a series or just a medium grit emery board. This is just sandpaper on a stick. and just get in there and soften up those edges. You can also just use straight sandpaper, cut a little strip and fold it over and get on in there in those little nooks and crannies. So next, I'm gonna pop a hole in the top, put in a jump ring, and we're gonna be all done. I'm going to place a hole in the top of my anchor for my jump ring, and for this design, I want it to be kind of a large hole, so I'm gonna use the large end of the screw down hole punch here. There we go. Now I always screw it down and then once it's pinched slightly, I check to make sure that the placement is in the center. I'm not gonna come off any ends and that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna screw it down here. Now I'm going to release. Now when it, this is going to swing over and then I'm going to hold it as I back it out so I don't damage my piece. There we go. That's pretty cute. There we go. Now I have a little bit of Sharpie marker there and there's a little light texturing so I'm going to take my Pro Polish pad and just give this a nice buffing. Pop a jump ring on here and that's pretty cute. Here are a variety of pendants or little pieces that I saw out of metal. Here's the anchor that we completed here in class with a nice big copper jump ring on top. I really like how that one turned out. And then on top, that's the pierced piece with the heart. Really like that one. This one down here is pretty interesting. This is taking the piercing to a whole nother level to add a lot of great interest. And then the bird here, this one is out of our brown anodized aluminum and I'm planning on riveting this to a piece. So here are a variety of ways that you can use this technique. The design possibilities are endless when you can make your own shapes. So have fun with it and see you next time.